This week's waiver wire list is going to have an old school twist. Taking all the way back as far as 2018, where guys like Mitch Haniger were all the rage in fantasy baseball. Yep, there are a lot of veterans who had been written off, basically, for fantasy purposes that are now making an impact. It's time to buy in. But first, I think we have to get this out of the way. We have to address the elephant in the room. I had to break out the Oakland A's hat because I really don't know if or when I'll even use it the rest of this year. There has not been any athletics player that has been worth adding, worth trading for, worth anything. The one guy that we thought might have value was sent down to the minors for absolutely no reason. And now he's back. Of course, I'm talking about S3 Ruiz. Now, when Ruiz got sent down less than a week into the season, after getting off to a pretty good start, mind you, this was basically just a sign that the A's didn't care anymore. They were tanking, sending a message. Who knows? So I really thought they had no reason to call him back up anytime soon. And they did because injuries. That's basically it. I mean, sure, Ruiz was on fire at AAA, but did that really matter? Was that really the point? Well, whatever the case, he's back. And so let's look at what's happened since then, because this is really weird. The guy that we were interested in just because of his speed, top stolen base getter in the American League last year. In three games since being called up, he's got one steal, but two home runs. Remember that this is a player who last season, his, I guess, breakout season because of the steals, was in the bottom two percentile in exit velocity, hard hit rate, and X slugging percentage. So now all of a sudden, he's a power hitter. But actually, the oddest thing is that they called him back up, and in the three games since that time, he's only started once. So I honestly have no idea what to make of this. All I know is, I guess there is some potential here if he plays and stays with the Major League Club and maybe runs and doesn't just sell out for power. He was dropped in a lot of leagues. His ownership rate right now on Yahoo is down to 63%. It's even lower in ESPN. The only thing I can really recommend here is stash if you need speed and you're not going to rely on him to start because I don't even know if the A's are going to rely on him to start or what. All right, now on to the old guys. Let's start with Mitch Hanniger, shall we? He's back in Seattle, and he seems to be enjoying it. He's got an eight-game hitting streak so far. He's driven in nine runs and has a pair of RBIs. Look, Hanniger, in his time with Seattle, you might remember, was a stud back in 2021, had 39 home runs and 100 RBIs that season, and he had been pretty good a couple years before that as well. But just when it looked like he was a true fancy stud, nothing but disappointment the next two years. And mainly that was just injuries. I mean, 2022 and 23 played a total of 118 games combined. And naturally that affected his performance. He had a few hot streaks, but overall really disappointing when he was on the field. He seems healthy now. He's back. He's in the middle of that Seattle lineup, which again, as a whole, has been very underwhelming, but it looks like here and there, they're starting to put it back together. And Hanniger is looking like his old self. Hanniger won't get you any steals whatsoever, but right now he's hitting for average. You know he's got some power and the RBIs should continue to come as soon as Julio Rodriguez starts to pick it up more. Another all-star outfielder from that 2021 season was Jesse Winker back when he was with the Reds. You might not even realize that now he is with the Washington Nationals. That's right, he's one of those crusty veterans that's keeping guys like Dylan Cruz and James Wood off the field. But unlike Eddie Rosario, Winker is actually looking like a really smart pickup. He is hitting. He's doing better than he has in a long time. Just over the past week, he's hitting 478 with a pair of home runs. He's even chipped in a steal just for good measure. Winker has always had a very patient approach at the plate. That's why he usually does hit for average, at least he had until, like Haniger, a lot of injuries kind of messed with him after that 2021 season. Then he bounced around a little bit. He's found a new home I guess he likes in Washington. Right now, he's one of the league leaders in WOBA, which is, of course, weighted on base average. In a points league or maybe a league that uses OBP instead of average, it's going to have a lot more value. But even in your traditional 5 by 5 league, he's definitely hitting for average. He'll have a decent amount of power. And the RBI opportunities won't be that plentiful for the Nats lineup, at least not right now. But hey, he's delivering. Sometimes you just got to ride the hot hand. 
But now, believe it or not, I'm actually going to recommend another Nationals hitter. That's Luis Garcia Jr. He's hitting 294 at this point in the season. Only one home run, you know, eight RBIs, nothing really outstanding in terms of numbers. But at second base, if you're looking for help, especially anyone who has Ozzy Albies and needs a temporary replacement, hopefully for the very short term, Luis Garcia is hitting. And what's interesting is that he just got moved to the cleanup spot. If that sticks, that's definitely going to help all of his counting stats. Now, the power, don't know exactly how high he can get in terms of home runs in the season. Maybe 20-ish. Right now, he's looking a little more like a doubles hitter, which I do like his approach. He's not selling out for power like he had been doing early in his career. He's settling for line drives, and those line drives, they're falling in for doubles, which he has seven so far this season. Those are base hits, at least, and that puts him in position to score runs. Garcia, definitely a talented player, but his plate discipline hadn't been the best. Looks like he's definitely improved his approach this year. Feels like there's some sense of urgency here finally because he had been handed that second base job very young age and this year there was some pressure that maybe it wasn't going to be given to him while well, he's responding. That leads me to another middle infielder, Ahmed Rosario, who you might remember came up with the Mets, went to the Guardians, and now he's in Tampa. Whereas he had been a starter for those two clubs, again, going to the Rays, you never really know with playing time and coming into the season, he was scheduled to be a bench player. Rosario has become pretty much a regular these days thanks to some injuries in Tampa. Brandon Lowe out on IL. He was the second baseman. Rosario gets to play some second base, but he's actually been playing a lot of right field. And they've stuck him in the middle of that lineup, fifth or sixth for the most part in the order. Well, he's responded by going 10 for his last 22. That's included four multi-hit games, two home runs, six RBIs, four runs scored. Only one steal, but Tampa is a team that does like to run. I feel like that will pick up if he continues to play regularly. Now, if Brendan Lowe and outfielder Josh Lowe, who hasn't played at all this season, do both come back, that could cut into his time, see him more as that utility role. But I feel like there'll be enough playing time going forward here that if he's going to continue to hit, which he's doing, then he still has some fancy value. And we heard a lot about this in the preseason, that they were going to try to have Rosario really kind of tap into his power a little bit more, pull the ball, have that kind of left field approach, because he was mainly going to hit only against lefties. Well, now he's hitting against righties as well because they could use his bat. So again, like with Garcia before, I'm going to say Rosario. I'm viewing him more as kind of a short-term fix. Again, if you had Albies, you're just looking for an upgrade at second base or shortstop, or he also qualifies as outfielder. Um, but again, as a guy is hot and he's playing, you're going to have to take advantage now. So he's definitely a solid streamer. And one last hitter I want to talk about. I think it's only fitting that we leave. It's another veteran here for last. It's, I guess his new nickname should be Mr. Irrelevant. I'm talking about Yerickson Profar. So that whole thing between Profar and Will Smith kind of lit a fire in him. But look, he seemed to have a fire lit under him from the beginning. Profar has been hitting since the Soul Series. He is one of the league leaders in terms of RBIs. He's driven in 13 runs so far. And honestly, this Padres offense is looking a lot better than I thought it would. Profar is batting 299 with two home runs, those 13 ribbies, and also has scored nine times. Look, this offense wasn't that deep. That's why they had to kind of pull him off the free agents market, bring him back to San Diego, and put him in fifth. You thought that was bad for the Padres, but actually turned out to be good for both parties. Now, a lot of people might not even know that at one time, Yerickson Profar was the number one overall prospect in all of baseball. That was back in 2013. Obviously, he never reached his full perceived potential or whatever, but he's been solid throughout the years and obviously he likes it in San Diego and he's doing what he needs to do for this team. He's driving and runs and he's hitting. Look, I don't know how long this will last, but we know this is a guy who has some potential. Only downside to Profar is that he only qualifies at outfielder. I remember back in the day, he used to qualify at basically every position other than catcher. He used to play all around the diamond. No longer, but still, if you're looking for an outfielder, you know, your third, your fourth spot, maybe someone to stream once in a while, Profar is delivering. If you love watching baseball and playing fantasy baseball, you probably love playing MLB The Show on PlayStation, Xbox, or Switch. Well, the best place to get those stubs without paying full price is MMOAH.com. On top of their already discounted price, you get an extra 5% off by using code ENDGAME. You can build your perfect Diamond Dynasty even faster by clicking the link in the description below and using our promo code. 
Now, as far as pitchers, I usually start with the starters, but let's go with a closer. There's one obvious ad right now, and that's Kirby Yates for the Rangers. He just picked up his second save. He's yet to allow a run to score in his first eight appearances. When Jose Leclerc predictably lost his job about a week ago, really thought David Robertson might step in, but Yates has been given the chance, and so far, he's held on to that job. It looks like he's going to have to lose it. If we want to flash back again to that 2019 season, Kirby Yates was an all-star. He led the major leagues with 41 saves that year. This was kind of a late-age breakout when he was with the Potteries that year, so looked like a solid closing option and then everything fell apart. Tommy John, he missed most of 2020 and all of 2021, never became a closer again, had a setup gig with the Braves and then now bouncing back to the Rangers. It seemed like he was just gonna be some veteran depth for that bullpen, but just like that, he's a closer again. A reminder that we are still looking at a very small sample, especially in terms of innings, but his numbers are more than encouraging thus far. He's still less than half owned across fantasy leagues. Bottom line, you need saves, you want saves. If Yates is out there, you should be getting him now. If you're looking for a young starter that's oozing with upside, well, Edward Cabrera might have already got scooped up in your league, but there's still a lot of leagues where he hasn't because people are still going to kind of wait and see what happens. He's only had one start so far, but it was a pretty good one. He held the Giants to only one run over six innings and struck out 10. Now, Cabrera is a super talented pitcher for the Marlins, came into this year with some health issues, and he's had health issues, but also he's had control issues, and that's the thing. Last year, got off to a good start as well, and then just couldn't stop walking batters. This is very much a risk-reward play. You know that there's going to be some big ups and downs as well along the way. Health, of course, always a concern here, just the sheer fact that he's a Marlins pitcher who all of them seem to be getting hurt these days. But there truly aren't many options out there on waiver wires that have as much upside as Cabrera. So if there's a guy worth taking a chance on, it's him. But it might also be time to buy back into Andrew Abbott for Cincinnati. Last year, after his debut, Abbott was one of the hottest pickups of all pitchers because he was on fire in his first few starts. And then there was a complete 180. Just was almost unplayable and got dropped everywhere. His first half to second half splits are very pronounced. In Abbott's rookie season, his first seven starts before the All-Star break pitched to a 2.38 ERA and a 103 whip. Then in 14 starts after the All-Star break, 4.79 ERA and a 1.49 whip. Sometimes it was command issues. Sometimes it was a home run ball. But maybe it was fatigue. Who knows? But again, this guy looked like an amazing waiver wire pickup, maybe a league winner, just all of a sudden turned into a pumpkin. Let's hope that's not the case this year because so far, first four starts, he's looking like the guy that we saw at the beginning of last year. He hasn't allowed more than two earned runs in any of those four starts, and he's stretching out a little bit. He's gone six and seven innings each of the last two. I definitely wanted to wait on this one to see was he going to show some semblance of consistency? He has. It's still April, but let's buy into the fact that maybe he's figured out what batters figured out about him and he's worked around it. I also wanted to wait on Javier Assad and you know, he looked really good in his first couple of starts, but with Jameson Tyone coming back for the Cubs, he's going to be in that rotation. Would Assad hold on to his rotation job? Well, he has. It seems like he's going to pitch this weekend against the Marlins. So to say right now, if you manage to pick him up before Saturday, Great streaming option. And the Cubs seem bent on using a six-man rotation this year. And with still some injuries, guys like Justin Steele out, Assad should stick around for the time being. And why shouldn't he? His first 16 and two-thirds innings, he struck out 18 batters, only giving up four runs. Assad has put together some nice ratios in his time with the Cubs and the Majors the last part of the last two years. But even throughout the minors, he was never really a high strikeout pitcher. I just didn't see a ton of upside here, but it seems like something has changed this year. And Eno Saris of The Athletic is pointing to his sinker. Assad, really interesting. He's one of those guys that uses a true six-pitch mix, and he relies a lot on his breaking balls. But Eno has pointed to more movement on Assad's sinker. He said he's got a top 20 sinker in the game right now. So with a kitchen sink full of pitches to throw at hitters, keep them off balance, and a very improved and effective sinker, Assad seems like he could be legit. At the very least, just streaming against the Marlins, part of a double header against a terrible offense. And if he continues to look good, you might have somebody who could stick in your fantasy rotation. 
And if none of those pitchers are available on your waiver wire, all right, let's get a little deeper. Ryan Weathers should. Yep, we're going with another Marlins pitcher. Now, Ryan Weathers is a name that feels like he's been around forever. He's still only 24 years old. That's because he debuted at a very young age back in, wait for it, 2021. The son of former major leaguer and one-time Marlin Dave Weathers, Ryan Weathers was the number seven draft pick at one time and a high-end prospect. He was a top 100 overall prospect, and that's why he got pushed up to the majors so early, but maybe it was a little too early. Look, between some inconsistency, a few minor injuries here and there, he's been bounced back and forth, mainly between San Diego and El Paso. He came up with the Padres who drafted him. Well, then he got flipped for Garrett Cooper at last year's deadline, and the Marlins are going to try to make him a full-time starter. And his first start this year didn't go so well, but his three starts since then, he's only given up a total of three earned runs. He's striking out over a batter per inning and generating a pretty high whiff rate, so looks like there might finally be something here. Now, it would have to be a deeper league for me to thrust him into a fancy lineup right now. I do want to see a little bit more long-term production from him, but we know this guy is talented. It's never been a question. It's just putting it together. Again, still super young, still got some potential here, so worth keeping an eye on if you're not that desperate. If you want to look deeper or just trying to find some prospects to stash, get ahead of the game on terms of waiver wire pickups, well, these are some players you could stash right now, some rookies that you can grab and beat the breakout. 